Um, so we're going to talk about this video. Have you watched it yet? I watched it. I pretty much watched majority of it. I watched it. <laughs> I'm always going to be my toughest critic when it comes back to watching videos. So it took me a while to watch it, but I did eventually watch okay. it. Okay. All right. Well, what, did you cringe at all? Or you, like... nah, you, you know what? It, it's always a sight. Of seeing yourself on video is kind of like, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes because you're always constantly critiquing yourself. Did I, could, did I, could I say that better? Did I say that accurately? So, yeah. But for the most part, I think I did all right. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. It's, it's a little nerve-wracking. So, well, we're going to get into this video, and what we're going to do is we're going to comment as we're watching it together. Uh, there's things to the story that he didn't explain, because the story's kind of lengthy. Yeah, the, the story's very, very lengthy. It's, it's a long, drawn-out process, so I'm going to do the best as I can to kind of go into more detail with s certain specifics of, the, of what happened. Exactly, and there's stuff that he says that I want to hammer in a little bit more for some of the newer guys, so let's get into this, all right? Let's do it. I actually got terminated two times in 11 days. I probably broke an all-time record. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that probably is the all-time record. Actually, yeah, I think yeah, it is. Way. I think it is. Real quick, uh, all that music is done by this man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I do the video editing. The camera's mine. This is all in-house. We're drivers. Uh, I'm a union steward. Uh, so we just kind of do this uh, when we have extra time on our hands. And I totally appreciate guys like Quincy and... Mike and I got a few others lined up. They're like, willing to put, donate their time to this. Likewise, know? my brother. Yeah, right. Always. Awesome. Thank you. All right, let's get into it. When our first 30 days, they are pretty strict on you as far as they want you to um, not have any accidents, not have any injuries. Um, they don't want you to have any missed pieces. So I was so focused on doing a good job my first 30 days. Uh, I remember my first 30 days. Uh, it was the most stressful time in my life. Yeah, I, I can <laughs> imagine. Yeah, 30 <laughs> days, you want to... You know, you're trying to make the best impression as you can your first 30 days. You don't want to mess up. One thing you don't want to do is go back to that preload. You know, <laughs> so you you hear horror stories about drivers who once they, you know, they go back to preload. It's a whole psyche thing. So, yeah, when you get out of preload, that's like your graduation day. It's like you're getting out of high school. You don't want to go back to high school once you've been admitted to college. So I totally get it. So you, you, you want to make the best impression as you can. Do whatever you got to do. But... There's, there's rules to doing everything the right way, and, and uh, that's, what, that's what we need to enforce. Absolutely. All right. Once I got the route done, I found that the earlier I got my route done, they would actually send me to go help other drivers. And after a while, at, at first I thought it was a badge of honor because I was out there busting the route out, doing everything I was supposed to do. So I felt like, okay, let me help the company out by helping other drivers. Let me get a star on my back, so to speak. What I realize is the more I end up doing it, the more work I end up getting. That's very true. Um, you know, sorry, <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, I, I, I hear a lot of complaints from a lot, especially a lot of the new drivers. And, um, you know, and I kind of get it because, you know, they, they want to go out there. Like I said, you don't want to go back to the building. So you want to make a good impression. So, you know, you're trying to do everything the right way. You're, you're, you know, making sure, you know, a lot of times you're actually doing stuff the wrong way because you're skipping the methods. You're out there running when you're supposed to be walking at a brick pace. You know, you're out there not using your three points of contact. You're actually hopping off the truck. So you're actually doing your body more damage by going out there and rushing. But I get it. You're trying to qualify. And uh, a lot of times when you do that, the company sees that you're making the extra effort to really push yourself to get the work done faster than what you're supposed to get done. So they say, well, hey. He might as well give him more work. He doesn't have enough work, and it ends up, you know, burning a lot of guys out, and they get discouraged. So, um, you know, it's kind of funny though. They, it's almost like they throw you in a catch twenty two from the get go. You know, you come in as uh, trying to pass your first thirty days, and they tell you the set of rules when you're in class, but those rules don't apply at all when you get out there right. because you have to qualify. Right, you have to qualify. If you literally do the job by the methods. Uh, you will not scratch like their their time schedule or whatever is completely off kilter so um, it's kind of the, the time doesn't work to your yeah. advantage it's kind of like set you up for failure mm -hmm. but you just have to make sure just follow your methods do what you're supposed to do and everything else will work out in the end absolutely once I actually started to implement that and I started to actually focus on my job opposed to trying to rush 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 I, I, I feel like I became a more effective driver. Um, so I can totally relate to that. Um, I remember when 
they used to think I was a great driver uh, when I was basically rushing. I was pissing a lot of customers off back when I was, because <laughs> I was in such a rush and I would make so many mistakes, but they all they looked at it was my overall allowance. They didn't care about anything else. Right. But once I started doing the job by the methods, customers were more happy. I was making less mistakes. Right. And you're really, realistically, it's, it's keeping your job more safe. Right. Because you're not, I mean, when you're in this rush mode, you're more likely to be terminated. Right. Maybe you run into something and don't report it. You know, um, there's just a, a plethora of things that can happen out there. And you rush, you make a lot of mistakes. Like, oh, when I, I remember when I first started, I was rushing. I was passing stops that I was supposed to be delivering to because yeah. you're you're thinking so far ahead instead of looking at what's in front of you. You're looking at stuff that's, you know, miles down the road. So, you know, work with, with everything that's in front of your face and then don't look too far ahead. And that's what happens when you're out there rushing. You're trying to, you know, you, you just, it's just, you get overwhelmed. You're just trying to concentrate on too much stuff in one time so that actually reminds me of a funny story when i was going through my uh first 30 days i was in such a rush and i was delivering this 30 piece bulk stuff i left at this guy's garage and this guy comes out and he's like hey this isn't mine oh wow and, yeah <laughs> and i was supposed to go across the street it, it happened and i was like in such a rush i didn't double check the address right yeah you know? it, it definitely happens yeah uh once i i became like a, a had a target on my back by being uh what they call an over allowed driver um, they began to over-supervise me. So instead of three uh, OJS rides a year, I would have probably three OJ OJS rides a month. And it got to a point where it was very overwhelming. Definitely went through a phase where I was being overly supervised. Um, they were following me around every day. I had a route right next to the building. Uh, they didn't like I was filing grievances and basically uh, they would write me up every single day. Yeah, I don't I, know if you ran into that. I, I I mean I had I had people sitting in the parking lot videotaping me. I've had uh people pop up on my truck while I was loading, just randomly just going the back of my truck. Hey, how you doing? I'm like, hey, who is it? <laughs> you know, who are you? You know? And like it literally got to a point where it's just like you don't know if these people were stalkers, you know. And this is during the time, even like during the Christmas season where, you know, you have to be real careful because you know, you don't know if people are trying to rob you or whatever the situation is. And they, you know, they made it very, very, they were more obvious. You know, it got to a point where you, you, you recognize the vehicles. You get followed so much after a while, you start to recognize the people driving. And uh, so you, you just, you just got to be careful out there. Just make sure you do everything that you're supposed to do. Don't worry about the other stuff. And like I said, that's another deterrent for you to not do stuff the way you're supposed to be doing because you're constantly, you know, thinking about moving fast. Now you got to think about people following you, videotaping you. So, you know, stuff like that, like I said, can be very overwhelming. So just follow your methods, do do your job the way you're supposed to do your job, and you, you should be all right. Absolutely. I told them exactly what I needed to be done at that particular time. I thought this was going to be implemented and helping me do my job more efficiently, but basically went through one ear and out the other. Yeah, that's that's the story. Of you. That, that's how it goes. That, <laughs> yeah. That's just the, you know, you, it, it's, uh, you just try to, they want, I, I don't think a lot of management, for the most part, they're not bad people. Uh, I think a lot of the heat comes down on them. Therefore, you know, it's like a domino effect. Their, their bosses want them to, you know, push the numbers, have drivers, you know, do things as far as like profit. It's all about profit. And when you, you know, when you mess with the profits, you know, you get a target on your back. So, like I said, it goes back to following your methods, doing everything the way that you're supposed to be doing. You know, you figure all that other stuff out later. And once you become more seasoned, once you become, um, you know, you deliver stuff on a regular basis and you get the experience, then, you know, you can tweak some things. But for the most part, like I said, just go out there, work efficiently. It's going to put years on your, on your body, which, which is, you know, what I learned before anything is accident injury free that's what i try to stress when i was going out there i was like you know when i was rushing i had more body aches i wasn't you know aware of my surroundings which can you know cause accidents you got children out there you know mm -hmm. playing on bicycles stuff like that so you don't want god forbid you don't want to hit any kids or anything like that so take your time do your job the right way everything I, like i said will work out in the end i had a particular ojs ride with a supervisor and um at the time, because I already had the target on my back, I was known as an over loud driver. Actually, I was told at one time I was the most over loud driver in the district. That's a true story, actually. <laughs> it actually got that, that, that was a true story. I was told I was 
the num the the worst driver in the district. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to bet on that side of the stick. You know, I know you got to be number one in something. <laughs> so my my thing was, it's like, hey, you know, it's not my fault. I was on a I was on what they call a, a mall. It was like considered a mall route. These mall routes, their timeline was just horrible. They never plan out. So if you're on the mall route, I'm sure you can, you know, you can uh you can relate to that. They're not they're not meant to plan out. They was like, well, you're four hours over loud. I'm two hours over loud once I even before I leave the building. So now I'm already two hours in the hole. So yeah, I'm, it, it doesn't give you any room for any error. So you know, don't pay attention to that over loud stuff. Like I said, you know, these routes don't plan out for the most part. You just got to go out there and just do your job the best way you can. And like I said, everything will work out in the end. Absolutely. You know what's funny about that is that um, the division manager before this one, the one that told you that, right, right, right. He said I was the worst driver yeah, he's we, ever we, seen we in his life. Yeah, we just take turns. We just flip flop. Yeah. You know, you go from the you, you go from the worst to the second worst, to the third worst. But you always once you get that that kind of like that target yeah. on your back, it's it's a, it's it's forever. So it, it's literally just, just because it. of performance. Right, but right, right. It, like, it doesn't have nothing to do with 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 you as a person. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just strictly. They don't like the number, and like I said, the numbers are not meant to work in your favor. So mm-hmm. you're at a disadvantage from that standpoint, you know, yeah. to begin with. So just to reiterate, he was on a mall route. Right. My situation was more like they hold me in the building, trying to shovel stuff out, and then I have to go run my route. So of course, wow. how the wow. hell am I supposed to make good numbers right. doing that? It's it's, so. it's a system that's set up to to design yeah. to have you fail. So exactly, exactly. Uh, I was on OJS ride one particular situation. The, dis- the division manager, as well as the center manager at the time, followed uh, my route and actually the division manager got on the truck and specifically told me that I heard about you, you're an over loud driver, and uh, I'll actually have you on the panel begging for your job uh, when, if, if need be. So me, you know, I am basically was overwhelmed because this is the first time I met the man. He's actually threatened me for my job. So I said, okay, well, I politely you know, excuse myself, uh, got off the truck and I said I refuse to have any uh, any further conversation without a union steward present. Uh, that He just utilized his wine garden rights. Uh, fucking great move. Right. Very, Thank very you. brilliant. Really I, 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 I really wanted to say something else, mm-hmm. but at the time you got to protect yourself from yourself mm-hmm. in, in most of these situations and always try to have a professional approach about things mm-hmm. because, you know, this this particular gentleman um, had a lot of run-ins with a lot of drivers um, during his time with the company, and um, you know he had already set the tone from the beginning that we were just going to have this type of relationship. So you know I had to practice a lot of restraint. I learned a lot from that particular situation. Like you know what, let me just it, it, let me just right now because I'm so upset. Let me just calm myself down, do things the way I was taught, and just, you know, refuse to have any further conversation with him without a union steward present.